Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin, and today I'm doing my first impressions on the F Note Pro Series. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is the F Note Pro Series? I'm glad you asked. The Pro Series consists of, and let me take a breath here, the F Note 500 Standard Drum Set, the F Note 501 Traditional Drum Set, the 502 Modern Drum Set, the 503 Power Drum Set, the 504 Technical Set, the 506 Progressive Set, the 700 Standard Drum Set, the 701 Traditional Drum Set, the 702 Modern Set, the 703 Power Set, the 704 Technical Set, the 705 Heavy Set, the 706 Progressive Set, and finally the one that I actually played, which is the 707 Complete Drum Set. I don't know pricing as of the filming of this video because F Note has not published pricing. You can go call up whatever music store you want. They don't actually know because F Note has not told them what they will be selling the drums for. My opinions may sway, you know, this way or that way after we know the official pricing later on. But first, today's video is brought to you by eDrumCenter.com. They've also got a discount link in the description of this video. Go click on that to save some money on anything electronic drum related. Go check out their store today. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the sizes of the drums and the specs of the module before I talk about my pros and cons, what I liked and didn't like about playing it in real life. The drum set features a 20 inch kick drum, a 14 inch snare drum, you got eight, 10, 11, 13, and 15 inch tom pads. You get a two piece set of 14 inch hi-hats that are some of the best in the business. You get a 20 inch ride cymbal, a 17 inch ozone style crash cymbal, an 18 inch china, a 16 inch crash, eight inch splash, an 18 inch dark crash, you get an 18 inch regular crash. Almost everything has bell zones, except for maybe like the splash symbol. I think the china doesn't have it and everything has 360 triggering. Now, when it comes to the appearance of the shells, usually they sort of stagger their releases where you'll have the F Note 5 in a sparkle white and the F Note 5X in like this darker wood grain wrap. And then you'll have the 7 in a sparkle white and the 7X in this darker sort of, you know, wrap. This time they're breaking that pattern because their Pro Series, as far as I can tell, only come in a sparkle white, but that could change. Just the marketing photos that I see, they're all sparkle white. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the specs of the module combo. And I say combo because this is uh, basically two different pieces. You have the interface, which I believe has the hard drive and you know all that stuff. You, you interact with the touchscreen, you make the sound changes here. And then the port selection is all in a separate stage box that lays on the floor. There's a one cable connection that sort of sends all the data or all the audio signals down to the stage box. And that's what you use to connect to front of house. This comes with about 15 kits on the version that I played, which was pre-production, it wasn't quite finished. They do say more sounds are on the way, but I can't say when they will arrive or if they'll be paid or free. The sounds themselves are newly recorded just in the last year in 24-bit. You can tell they just sound nicer than the previous, like, you know, lower end modules. No more cable snake on this drum set. It's all individual pad inputs. So if one cable goes bad, you don't have to buy a complete new snake. So that was pretty smart. You get 12 channels of balanced XLR outs with ground lift switches. There's dedicated bus compression for buses one to six. There's a high pass filter, two band EQ for buses one to 12. You get 12 channels of multi-track USB audio and 16 channels of USB MIDI simultaneously. So that's great. I don't really see that very often. You get five pin DIN MIDI out, two headphone jacks in quarter inch and eighth inch sizes. You get right and left line outs that are unbalanced, right and left line ins that are also unbalanced. And then you have your monitor ins, right and left. This does have a ground lift switch along with how the pins are wired. Now the weak point here, of course, is that little data transfer cable between the stage box and also the module. So there's little pin screws so it makes sure the cable never accidentally becomes unplugged. The module also has Bluetooth and finally a footlight. So I guess if you wanna unplug or connect different wires in the dark on stage, you can turn on a little light underneath the module and that will give you visibility when you're trying to mess around with the stage box. Okay, so next up, I wanna talk about some of the stuff that was really emphasized to me when I was standing there at the booth. I was told that this pro line is made for stage use specifically. Like I'm sure there will be people that will buy this, you know, to do drum covers or to practice at home and stuff like that. Maybe do some like MIDI recordings for clients, but it's specifically built and geared and all the feature set is designed around using this in a live venue. I don't agree with all the decisions they made when trying to design this drum set, but I understand that that's what they were going for.
Okay, so let's break down what I liked and didn't like about the drum set, starting off with what I liked first. Now, the first thing is that it's just a really fun, inspiring drum set to play. I know that sounds cheesy, but we're here to have fun and feel inspired when we're playing electronic drums. And if a drum set just doesn't have certain features or the sounds aren't quite up to par or the drum set doesn't react quite right, that will throw you off and break the, I don't know, the illusion or whatever you want to call it. This drum set just delivers, especially because it is the 707 complete drum set. It's like the, the nicest one they offer. It was really, really fun and inspiring to play this drum set. Number two, I really like the stage box or whatever the official name is for it. Uh, it's legit. If you play live, having all those outputs, having multiple headphone jacks and lines in and monitor ins and line out, all that stuff is very, very useful in a live context. There are some drum modules that will have XLR outputs, but usually it's only a master right and left outs. And then all the direct outs on most flagships, they're going to be like quarter inch. And one funny little benefit of this that you may not think of on the surface is that the cables are no longer dangling from like three feet in the air coming from the back of a drum module. Instead, all the messy cables are on the floor where they belong. Next up, I do like the sound set. They do sound much better, improved over their previous drum modules. They just sound very nice. And by the way, I did hear this through speakers when I, there was like a band playing there. And I also played it extensively through headphones. In both cases, the drums sound really good. A tad on the dry side through headphones for reasons we'll get into later, but overall very good. It's also worth mentioning that there's not a bunch of like, you know, BS filler kits full of trash can lids and, you know, pew pew sounds. These are actually real life usable kits that you could use live on stage. This next one is a little thing, but it's just a nice way to visualize panning. I think they call it global pan. So you can see where in the sonic spectrum your snare drum is versus your ride cymbal versus your toms. Instead of having to memorize the actual, you know, numbers, I pan this to, you know, negative five. Instead of that, you just see in real time where your drums are in relation to the sonic field around you. I like that. Also, compression has finally been added, at least on the buses. I don't know if individual sounds actually get compression or not, but on the buses they do. And so that's a step forward for F note, which apparently I guess was, you know, didn't really want to add compression because they didn't have it on their previous kits, but they finally have it on this drum set. The eight inch Tom is great. It feels and works the way it should, but I also just really like a lot of the eight inch Tom sounds that they recorded and associated with that pad. And then of course you have the new China, which is based on the previous uh, ATV China symbol. This time it has like these fake lathing lines that is just a nice little touch. And then you have the 18 inch dark symbol, which is a little bit cheeky. It's a little bit BS, of course. The only difference is that it's tinged a little bit darker gray than some of the other symbols. A lot of the sounds associated with dark symbol sounds are sort of already sort of aimed at that symbol port. I realize that it's kind of BS, but at the same time, I like attention to detail on little things that don't actually matter because when they all come together, it adds to the overall like visual experience. And the final good thing about this drum set, before we move ahead to the weaknesses of it, is that if you want a drum set that just looks cool, sounds good and responds right, but just doesn't have the overly complex stuff in the background, well, this drum set might be the one for you. It's simple, it gets the job done, and it looks pretty nice. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the weaknesses of the drum set, at least in my opinion. The first thing is that the sound count is pretty low for a flagship drum set. When you're making a flagship kit, usually the, the thing that everyone expects is like 50 kits or more. Again, we're, we're looking at a drum module, according to eDrum Center, which costs $2,500. We're in really elite tier pricing, so you expect elite numbers of sounds. And I understand the whole debate about you know quality versus quantity, but when you spend this amount of money, you should be able to expect quantity and quality at the same time. The second downside is that sample import is not a feature on this. All I can say is that if they're marketing something as for professionals, for, for pro environments, Artists demand that their electronic drummers have sounds from the album. They need to have the exact clap sound, so they need to have that as a side pad. The artist demands a bass drop exactly right here. You know, if you're drumming for Bruno Mars, if you're drumming for Katy Perry, those drummers are using electronic elements with samples from the album that need to be played live. And so for a drum module of this pricing not to have sample import, that's a little bit confusing. 
It's also worth mentioning that if you like editing your sounds a lot, this is not the module for you. Editing controls still lag behind the competition. They may have brought in compression, but they removed reverb. It doesn't have transient controls, that at least that I saw. Like the level of fine-tuned editing that you get on this module does not hold up versus like the Pearl Mimic Pro or the Roland module. You don't have like all these like room microphones that you can do inside of the Pearl Mimic Pro and stuff like that. It's a little bit on the limited side. Now, when it comes to the shells, they do look pretty nice at a distance. That sparkle white sort of finish looks nice. The problem, though, is that at this pricing level, you do have the right to be a little bit picky. And when I sat behind the drum set and I look at these big wrap seams where they where they join together, that's something that you wouldn't expect on a drum set of this pricing tier. It, it doesn't have the same effect as me sitting behind a nice Gretsch drum set or a really nice Pearl drum set that just like gleams. It, it looks beautiful. This drum set looks nice from a distance. It'll be fine on stage. No one will know. But those seams, they've got to go. They need to go with like a painted sort of design or like a veneer, a really nice wood veneer for a drum set of this pricing level. Also, another downside is that kit loading times do take a few seconds. I'll show you on screen with the current firmware, like how long it takes. For me, it's not an issue because I use software and that takes time to load as well. But some people like instantaneous loading. This next one is a very big head scratcher for me. They decided to remove ambience and reverb from this drum module. And here's why they did it, and then I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense. They removed it because when you're playing live, you don't want to have a big echoey drum sound going through the PA speakers or the big you know, speaker set in a venue because that makes the drum sound very muddy. I've used to make the mistake, the, the newbie mistake, playing my TD-30, of cranking the room ambience and the reverb and stuff because it sounded good in headphones. But when you play in a live venue with all that stuff cranked, it just makes the drum sound boomy and muddy. It's hard to differentiate. It just sounds awful. It is best practice to remove most of the reverb and room ambience from your drum module so you get a pretty much dry signal feed going to front of house. The problem, though, is that there's a difference between best practices and removing a feature entirely on a flagship drum module. Because it feels like F-Note is telling us what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do with the gear that we bought. I understand their thought process of doing it. I just don't agree with it. Okay, so that wraps up the pros and the cons section, just uh, sort of balancing them overall. I do think that F-Note does have a winner. There's too many drum sets and no pricing yet to give a firm sort of yes or no on particular sets. But I do think that F-Note has struck an interesting balance where they reduce complexity, bring up the flagship features, and have something that makes your life easier if you want to play electronic drums live, especially for venues that want a house kit. This could be a strong contender overall. Let me know your thoughts on, in the comments below. Overall, these drum sets are excellent. I really look forward to playing them again. They're great. And uh, F-Note is doing unique stuff out here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, especially to the people who support 65 Drums over on Patreon.com. See you in the next one.